Hello all, it's Artist and Tony, and this is part of a continuing series on basic floor and wall framing and roof framing. This is our little test house, our case study here. This is actually a house that I've already built. I have the drawings here. This is basic floor plan. This has worked out really well. It's really neat. Uh, maybe I'll show some pictures at some point. All that said, the section of the home we're working on first is just this 48 by 28 section here. And you can see from previous videos too that we talked about foundations in the first video. And in the second video, we talked about floor framing. Turn that layer on. And just recently, we talked about subfloor systems and the history of those and we went ahead and put our Advantech down. You know if you haven't seen those videos you can go back and, and see those. Uh, but right now what I thought would be kind of cool is to show you a, a new tool I'm using. It's uh, from a company called Medic and they have a whole suite of extensions for SketchUp and I'm using SketchUp Pro. What I'm going to, going to do is show you how this extension works but then I'm going to kind of show you how we would do it on the site. And I have this basic wall drawn already. Just I was testing the, the extension earlier, trying to figure out how I wanted to do my corners. And a note about that, here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we have an energy code. And just a few years ago, they were started requiring R19 in the walls. So in order to do that, you would have to get, you know, using you know, conventional insulation standard, you know, what we think of as standard insulation, you would have to have two by six uh, studs for that. So we're showing two by six framing, and I think this is probably gonna be something we just have to get used to. At first, I didn't like it really, but I do like how it gives us a deep uh, window well the window inset so you can have a nice seal and we'll get into that later <laughs> when we start talking about windows. What I thought I would do is just delete this wall and show you how easy this can be using this Medique extension. I'm just going to go click on the wall and I've already kind of messed around with the presets so I won't spend a lot of time on that because I got a lot to get into. Now, this is funny. I'm actually showing the subfloor the way you would probably see it in real life, okay? Uh, we don't start it, depending on how wide this is, this is 28 feet. So I know that that uh, because of the way, and this is, it's already like this on this side. I know that because of the way that the Advantech works out, that it's not going to make it uh, if you have an even number uh, you know like 28 feet or 24 feet the sheets aren't going to be wide enough to c c carry that depending on the gap that you leave now this stuff and we talked about this in a previous video that this Advantech is self gapping so but it, it it's basically the face of the sheets 47 and a half so it varies a little bit okay so the reason I mention that is because I'm going to start my wall out like you saw that other one. I'm going to click to this corner and I can just raise it up in a second. But this is cool because I literally used to just draw every stud, every plate. And now I can just um, use this wall extension to draw the studs. And you can see how easy that was. And in, in the uh, parameters here you put your wall height the stud type all, all of that information and then I can just simply go raise this up now you might say well that's not neat looking artist and Tony well I'm trying to show you how things are done in real life okay sometimes this doesn't come all the way out to the edge and it's perfectly fine most of the time it will be right at the edge but 
I, I know I've worked with this Advantec for 20 years, probably longer than that. <laughs> I've been in the business for 40 years, so I know that it doesn't cover completely. So what I did was I centered the whole, the whole thing on this 28 feet. So you can see I've got about an inch over here and I've got an inch over here because I don't want to waste a whole sheet or whole sheets to go down and put a little two inch strip on the outside edge over here. Okay, so I just took my dimensions off the floor plan uh, to save a little time. I just went ahead and laid out these walls. Now these walls are gonna be obviously laying on the floor when you lay them out. And I'm gonna show that in a minute, but for now, I'm gonna leave this up like this because we're kind of in design mode. Uh, we're not in, you know, actually in the field, obviously. So we, have, we can use tools to make things quicker and that's what this Medik uh, wall extension does. So the next thing I'm going to do is to put my windows in. And I know that this says it's five feet four to the first window and then 10 feet and then 10 feet and then nine foot three. Oh, that's from there. Okay, so 10 feet. So the, the, the scheme here is putting a window in the corner basically about that's we would typically leave about four and a half inches here so you'd have your t and i'll show you in a second what the t is and then you'd have two jacks you'd have a king stud and a jack these windows are going to be let's see two feet four now when you're sizing your windows you need to make sure that based on what type of window whether it's a casement or a double hung let's go here rectangle we can get into the window details later but if uh, in this case a a 28 by 48 casement window meets egress requirements um, if it's a double hung window it's probably going to be a little bit bigger so you want to double check your uh, rough openings your window sizes before you start uh, framing obviously and that should have been determined and our header is going to be two two by tens and I'll explain that in a minute and we'll probably have to adjust our height header height in this application and I'll show that also built up header and let's just try that and see what happens so that window will go right here on that layout mark and we'll see how well that works in a minute uh, there should be an inch and a half here if I did my math correctly I also need to adjust my header height and again some of this some of this is I've just started working with this extension and it's going to save a lot of time but it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because the way we actually frame our walls is the header is up against the top of, of the bottom of the top plate. So what I need to do is check the header height. Six foot eight. Okay, but I need it to go up three and three eighths. So I need this header height to be at 83.375. That's 83 and 3 eighths. And I have to put it in in inches here. So let's try that. And I adjusted the um, opening over so I'll have room for my T. My T there. Which will, that should be three inches. Yeah. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we need a different size window. We basically need one that's square for this design, for this bathroom. It wants to be up higher off the floor because we don't need an egress window and it's more of a privacy situation. So we're gonna make that one two foot four by two foot four, which turned out pretty cool. There we go. And you can see it works out well with the, the showers here. Look on our floor plan. It 
the other reason I wanted to have this floor plan here was so you could see relative to how things look, you know, from the plan to the things, the way it's actually built. So you can see here, these are low walls, these are low shower walls, so they're not, they seem to be, make this room tight, but they don't, not really. So for this particular wall, that is all the windows. And, and uh, of course, in a minute I'll show you this would be laying down on the floor when we build it, but basically that's how that would look, and we'll talk about terminology in a second. Uh, now I'm going to put the T's in the wall, and the T's are basically where our wall intersections are going to be. You can see here, let's go back to our plan, every location where we have a wall we will have what we call a T in the wall to accept that wall to connect it to the exterior wall or any wall, any wall intersection you would have it, not just exterior walls. Now I'm working with this extension. I, I have found that that the wall regenerates itself and it doesn't put T's in so I'm gonna have to put those in manually. So what I think I'm gonna do just for the sake of not losing work, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this wall and I'm gonna put it out here. So you'll have to just excuse that uh, duplication for the time being. So now what I'm gonna have to do, and, I'm, and I've talked to the guys at Medik about this, uh, about a few things I need to mention this too. I got, I'm gonna have to explode this wall uh, because now I have to go in. It, let me just unexplode it. And I'll show you what I mean, and maybe I'll send them this part of the, the video. When I take and I add a wall, and maybe I'm just not doing this correctly again, I just, uh, just started using it. But I need to change my walls to two befores for this. And everything else is good, okay? But if I come in here, and I want to start this wall. I'm just going to run one out here like that. But you can see, let me close this. But you can see that when I add this wall, it doesn't put a T there. That's, that's the original stud that was there. So I'm going to show you what we will do. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to do two things here. Okay, I'm trying to show you that there are tools that you can use to make things faster. If you want to do framing plans like this, uh, you know, normally we wouldn't go through this extent, but I'm doing this for training purposes. But if you do want to use this tool, uh, these are just a few little things you might have to work around. Uh, now, it may be that when I contact Medique, they say, well, you, you know, you have to do what you're doing. You have to, uh, uh, that you know put the put the T's in manually but it would be nice and it may there may be some kind of function here where I need to grab this there's a join wall and I don't know if that's what this is wall tools join join wall maybe I need to select both of them but again I need to check this out with Medique and see if I'm just not doing it correctly. I don't know if it, it maybe it just doesn't put T's in the wall. In the next lesson we'll have more wall framing and I will I may have an update for you. But for now what I'm going to do is show you how we make these T's. Now there's several ways you can do it. That stud would be here. And then you would have another one on this side. When I say there's several ways, this part's not part of the option. You want, you'll have to have a two by a stud on either side. This makes part of the T, and I'll show you in a second why it's called a T. And then we typically take the blocks. You see these, when you cut your jacks, you'll have these blocks that are left over. They're 10 and 3 quarters. Should be 10 and 3 quarters. Yeah. So 
when we're making up these jacks, which is this member right here, we just cut, we just take, we count how many jacks we need and we cut 10 and three quarters off of a stud. And we do that first. And then we take those blocks and we put them in here when we're making up these tees. So now if we move this wall back, you can get a better look at it. So you're basically just taking two studs and you're taking the blocks that you cut off of your jacks and you're making a T out of them. Now some people will put a solid two before in here. It's really not necessary because you've got your top plate overlaps the outside wall if it's done properly. So that ties it in and of course the wall is going to be nailed to the floor. And so this is really kind of good. These are just spacers to make sure that you're, you have a nailer on both sides. There's no reason to waste a, a whole stud uh, going in here like that. This is what we want to do. We want to use our waste from these cripples and, and these jacks to make blocks out of. So let me put all those T's in and then we'll go from there. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this other wall. It was just for showing you what the extension could do first. And so now we've got all our parts in our wall. We've got our corner here, which is basically just a two to six. You would just nail it in the shape of an L and that gives you a, for your wall coming in this direction, gives you a nailer on the inside. And that will probably be in our next lesson on wall framing because this video has turned out to be quite long and I don't want to bore you to death. So what we'll do is we'll just use this one wall as our example for this video. So what we would actually do is build this on the floor before we stand it up. I'll just show you what's, what that looks like, like that. And you literally would tack your plates down after you lay out these plates but you would put your two plates together and mark them off at the same time. So, so this plate, when you first start out, is down here, like this. And you mark all your studs and all your locations for where your windows go. And then you spread these out when you get ready to build your wall. And then you would put your window framing in first. Okay. You would put your two, put your two king studs in first. Then you would lay your header in there. And then you would put your jacks in. And then you would put this piece across the sill of the window and then you put your cripples in. Actually, you can lay your cripples in first in here and then slide this on top of it and then nail it all together. And then you would put your T's in the wall. And remember when the, when the wall is laying down on the floor, they go face down so that when you stand the wall up, they're facing the wall. I've made that mistake before. And you just go through and put all those T's and your window openings in first. You see, the reason you put your windows and T's in first is because they take out stud locations. You can see, you remember I had to move some studs to put these T's in. So once you put all this stuff in, you can go back and put your studs in the wall. And then... Uh, after you do that, you come back and you put your top plate, your double top plate on, and you leave it out, you leave the gap there for where your wall is going to intersect over your T, like that. And typically you'd put just a nail um, where at every stud location. You really don't want to nail between the studs because you're going to have plumbing, you know, and wiring and whatever. You don't want your plumbers running their whole saws up in the nails and stuff. So be nice to your plumber. 
and then you would stand this up. So you'd probably have four, at least four guys on this wall, maybe five guys, four or five guys on a 48 foot wall. And you would just stand it up. And then while a few guys hold it, you would brace it. You know, you'd run braces down here and you would nail the end braces on the outside of this wall and come down and nail it on the outside of this band. You don't want to put a brace up here in the way because you're getting ready to build a wall up here. And what you do, and I meant to talk about sequencing, is you build your exterior walls first, but the two walls that you build first are the two longest walls. And then you come back and build the, the other shorter walls in between them. So for terminology, let's just go over that one more time. We've got our corner, and we call this a, a California corner, the way it's configured in an L shape. And again, we'll go over another corner in the next video. This video just got kind of long on me, and uh, we'll do that in the next video. We'll talk about different types of corners. So that's our California corner. This is our a stud on your window of framing. Let's see if I can get a pointer here. Uh, this is your king stud, the one on the outside. On each of these outside studs are your king stud. This is your jack or your trimmer. I always like to call it a jack because I think of it as a jack because it's holding up the header. So it's like jacking up the header. And then you have a jack on both sides. And again, your sill plate. It's basically the seal of your roof opening. Your sole plate, sometimes people call the bottom plate the sole plate. And then you've got these cripples here underneath. You can think of cripples as studs that are just kind of cut short. Of um, It's kind of a, a bad term, really. It's, it's not very politically correct anymore. <laughs> but, but that's what we call them. They're called cripples. And on a taller wall, you might have them above the header, but in an eight foot wall, a 92 and 5 eighths, uh, an eight foot wall with 92 and 5 eighths studs, we would shove our header up against the top, the bottom of the top plate like this. So we're going down the wall and then we have our key here and it's facing in towards the wall. And again, we come down and we have our other window rough openings and that's basically, in a nutshell, that wall is framed. And of course, we would want to brace it off about every 10 to 12 feet. Let me show that bracing right, right quick. So I went ahead and threw the braces on there just to show you how the temporary bracing would work. I mean, this is just enough to hold it up while you're getting the other walls up. And then I'll show you in the next lesson that once all of our walls are up, we put permanent, well, semi-permanent braces up that will stay up. Most of them will stay up even till right before the drywall. These are just to hold it. Uh, let's say you get this wall built at the end of the day and you don't want it to fall over overnight, have the wind blow it down. <laughs> Uh, then you want to have at least this number of braces and you can just take a stud for these temporary braces This is just a stud. That's why it's kind of short and at that angle and just uh, And you won't be wasting these you can knock them off and use them uh, later on for the interior walls One thing I did want to mention is that the way these headers are made on these smaller windows this is the way they're made on, the reason I say smaller windows, you can get by with doing this. Um, it's a convenient way. It's not the most energy efficient way. The most energy efficient way would be to, in the most structural way, in the way you're supposed to do it, <laughs> is put these together like this. I keep copying it instead of moving it. And then you would come, you know, figure out a way to insulate this interior cavity before you uh, nail the drywall up. Uh, obviously, if this is here, you, you're going to have a void 
in your insulation here. The other thing is that, you know, this is really convenient for the, for the drywallers. I mean, it gives them, there's no void or anything like that. And um, it makes a nice, neat looking header. And for smaller window openings, I'm gonna say probably up to three or four feet. Uh, this is structurally sound, but when you get into window openings that are bigger than that, I'm going to say over, probably over three foot six, I'm guessing. You really want to put your header back together and it has to, it should have a nailing pattern. Typically you would have three nails every, you know, 12 inches or so. So, and there's a chart for that. There's a header chart that shows nailing patterns. So there's a few issues here on the headers. Uh, it's just that on these smaller windows, we typically can get by with making them like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a group so I can work with it if I need to. And you can see that looks much better in the wall. It's just not how headers are meant to work. We just get by with it, so to speak. <laughs> Let's just review right quick. I'm going to set this view up so we can see some text. That will conclude our first lesson on wall framing. I want to say I appreciate all of our apprentices and those other people who are just interested in learning. Uh, this, this course is mainly, this lesson is mainly meant for our apprentices on our apprentice path, but obviously anybody, adult, you know, anybody wanting to learn is welcome to follow along. And we welcome all who uh, want to continue learning. But I appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next lesson.